For hundreds of years, European explorers searched this coastline for California's fabled cities of gold. And yet, the treasure hunters kept missing the entrance to one of the world's finest natural harbors, the Golden Gate. It was hidden for so long because this is what explorers would see, a rocky shoreline, turbulent waters, and no hint of an opening. The bay opens up three miles back from the Pacific. Its entrance is only a mile wide, hard to spy from the sea. In fact, it was a land expedition that finally spotted the entrance from nearby hills, 230 years after the first Spanish ship sailed by. A 19th century army captain gave the passage its name, Golden Gate. Today, anyone entering the bay by sea must pass under San Francisco's most iconic structure, the Golden Gate Bridge. It's hard to imagine now, but before the bridge was built, the only way across the bay was by ferry. Boats carried 50,000 commuters a week. It's no wonder the biggest opposition to the bridge came from ferry boat operators. But at last, in 1930, the voters of San Francisco gave engineer Joseph Strauss the green light. Strauss said he dreamed of building the biggest thing of its kind that a man could build. His design ranks with the Empire State Building and Brooklyn Bridge as a symbol of American progress and ingenuity. The entire bridge is 1.7 miles long. Its towers rise 746 feet above the bay. To build a similar bridge today, it would cost over a billion dollars. In 1937, the Golden Gate made its debut as the world's longest suspension span. Its two main cables reach 4,200 feet from one tower to the other. It's called a suspension bridge because the roadway hangs from the cables. The cables are held up by the two towers and anchored at either end of the bridge. And while most bridges at the time were painted black, the Art Deco Golden Gate was painted a reddish-orange to catch the light and make it stand out in fog. 